All right, so we've got all four water barrels here. And uh, the plan is to hook them all up together with this ABS pipe we have down here. Um, I'll get a little closer here. I've got a rubber elbow on there. And I'm gonna put, uh, I have tees bought for these. The only thing is I don't have is this piece that hooks onto the barrel. I don't have enough of them. Uh, so right now we just use the one barrel and I've actually got a transfer pump in uh, that I can move from pump or from barrel to barrel and transfer over through the garden hose and keep this one full is the plan. So when it's full we have 4,000 liters of water here in the house and at this point we're still hauling that from the creek. Uh, long term we plan on collecting rainwater here and we may even in the summer anyway pump from the, the river up uh, this way. We'll see how it goes depending on how much rainwater we have here. Um, we have talked also about putting more of these in the shop, but right now it's working very well with just the 4,000 liters. We've installed here a pump. It's just a regular RV 12 volt pump, and I think it's set for 45 or 50 psi. So it keeps the lines pressurized all the time. If we open up the tap, that pump will turn on by itself and, um, and keep the lines pressurized. That's tied in there. This here, these alligator clips is just for the other pump, the transfer pump, whenever we need to move it from one barrel to another, or from one barrel to this barrel, then we hook up with that uh, with that transfer pump on those alligator clips. I um, don't know what else to tell you. One issue we have run into here is that when we fill these up, the water is cold and the room is warm. And so the barrels do sweat until the water in the barrel warms up to the same temperature in here. We have a lot of condensation. So this is only a short-term solution. These are never meant to be in our house. This is our breezeway, and uh, these barrels are never meant to be here. They'll be here all winter long, and then come summer, we'll be putting them out. And uh, hopefully, Lord willing, anyway, we'll be building a shop on the end of here, and those barrels will go in the shop. But for this winter, uh, this is the best solution we could come up with for right now. And uh, so we're dealing with the sweating and the condensating by just keeping it dry underneath. We don't want our floor to rot out. We're regularly mopping that up. Uh, anyway, so it's tied in here, three-quarter line. That runs up through the house. I've got that going up here. You can see the three-quarter is supplying. Everything goes all the way into the kitchen that way. Runs past the bathroom. And then I'm teed off with a half-inch line for the laundry room this way. We only wash with cold water. Uh, so we didn't run a hot water that way yet. I will probably down the road. And then it feeds into the bathroom and the shower and makes its way into the kitchen, over to the kitchen sink as well as the other way uh, for the hot water heater. Good morning, everybody. We are uh, working at hot water here today. It gets kind of tiresome uh, not being able to have a nice hot shower in the house here. So I got this hot water heater we picked up and uh, we've already gone ahead and taken, this was an oil fired hot water heater. We've gone and taken that part off already. And we are going to bring it upstairs and hook it up to uh, have hot water here off grid. A little dark okay so what we got going on here we have this water heater this used to be an oil fired hot water heater you can see at the bottom here where the oil fired part was stuck we took that out we're not using that so the bottom of this guy is actually empty that was the fire pot and that's disconnected we're not using that at all and I've extended these I got a six inch nipple here I would have loved to have a shorter one because it sticks out so far but that's all I could get and so we've got that one going there. That line is going to go down to the wood stove down below. I'll show you that in a minute. This one here, again, I wish I had a shorter nipple, but that's all they had. So it makes it just clumsy, but same principle. This one here is also go down to the wood stove. We're going to be running off thermal siphon. So the cold water is going to want to go down. The hot's going to come up, naturally travel up, and dump back in here, and it's going to circulate around and around and around, and that'll make it hot. The other two lines, one is cold water coming into here, and the other one is going to be the hot water going to the shower, sink, um, laundry, that kind of thing. So that's <clears throat> that's all that's going on here. Ignore all this other stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's why you shouldn't eat peanuts and film at the same time. This is just a thermostat that <clears throat> was running the oil-fired uh, unit, and I may end up using that later on down the road if it gets too hot 
then um, I may use that thermostat to actually dump the excess water in uh, just into into a loop in the house to keep the house warm. But for now, it's just non-existent. None of that's hooked up. new armband. Okay, so this is for our hot water. That is going to slip around that chimney right there. Not quite done yet. And uh, then we'll hook our hot water or the lines up to here and here. And as it travels around the wood stove, it'll be getting cooking hot and then it'll dump back into our hot water heater. Giving us hot water uh, as long as we've got the wood stove going. Pressure, you turn the pump back on, Yeah, but what happened though? Well, they cut the hose off. <laughs> I forgot you turned the water back on. Anyway, that was fun. It's just soft copper tubing, we'll vent it all up for our stove pipe. The stove pipe will sit inside of this, it'll go on top of the wood stove and um, hook up. I got a solder pieces on the end of here right now to hook up to my PEX lines that are coming through the floor from the hot water heater upstairs. And uh, basically, all that's going to happen here is the cold water is going to come in through the bottom and it's going to heat up as it gets around that wood stove and it's going to naturally dry. And the hot water will be coming out the top going back to the wood stove up that way and as it rises and leaves it's automatically going to suck cold water back through and it's just going to create a thermal siphon and then just continuously keep circulating as long as there's heat so this is going to go over here on top of the wood stove we're going to wait for it to cool down it's plenty hot right now and uh, lots of smoke going through the chimney but once it cools down we'll be putting it up there and hooking it up to these lines and then uh, we're obviously going to finish this wall here yet insulate it and put some drywall up here but uh, that's going to be our hot water for the house off-grid hot water can make it hard to solder so 
you need to make sure that it's nice and clean. And that's how it works when you're doing that? Yep. And then I don't touch it, just set it aside. hot enough, you'll just melt it and just suck it right into the hole. It's almost hot. There it goes. See how it disappeared? Inside. Alright, so we got fire going in there. I had to let it cool right off in order to get the, uh, I don't know if you want to call that, I guess a hot water coil. I was going to call it a jacket, but it's not a jacket, to uh, go on there. So now we've got hot smoke going through there. You can start to feel it warming up already. I'm going to turn the water on. It's hooked up now to uh, upstairs. We're going to finish this all off yet, of course. And uh, anyway, we've got the hot and cold lines going to the hot water heater. And the two coming down are for our circulation loop through this coil. And uh, yeah, we'll go turn the water on. We'll see how she works. All right, hasn't been running very long yet. I got the water running upstairs. Uh, the coil, Anissa was down here. She could feel the water going through because it cooled it off. Come here, perfect. You can shut it off then. Wes was just priming the system. This line here, this is the incoming line, it's stone cold. Like I can feel it here, it's very cold. Like I'm right beside the chimney. Okay, that chimney is hot. Give you an idea, like we're actually in the danger zone. I'm gonna have to turn that down there. Just lit the fire, it's very, very hot. Okay, and standing here is very, very hot. But here's my hand right beside, completely cold because the water upstairs is still cold. That one, the top coming out, I cannot touch that. Like that is just that is super duper hot. So it's clearly working, which is exciting. We may end up having a, a hot shower here yet tonight. I'm gonna dial these down. If you're not familiar with that, um, you just play with these. This is air inlets on the stove. Close them off a little, get a little less air in, the fire burns less hot. And uh, we try to keep this in the, the proper range. The right range is in the gray area. Now, of course, we're past that, right? So I'm gonna bring it back down a little bit. Hey everybody, I am back again and I just feel like a whole new man. I like, I smell clean everywhere. Mm. So we had the shower, or no, we had the hot water running, uh, what, for a whole day now, I think. And uh, tonight we had the first hot shower, or I've had the first hot shower in the house and it feels great. So we now have running hot water and cold water and uh, the water heater is working amazing. They, uh, the ladies had 
dish water that was hot at the sink and we've got nice hot water in the shower and i think there's going to be a line up there in a minute and everybody's going to have to have their showers so very good success if you uh, enjoyed that give her a thumbs up down there and uh yeah let us know what you think we'll see you later on the next one